Hi, this is David Monacciotto. Welcome to video 1C, which is the third video and final video in the Foundations topic. Publishes on March 10 and concludes the sequence of reading assignments in 1C. And that means these last three, they repeat, repeat from last year. And um, the nature of them is that there is just some lists, memorization, qualitative concepts here. I don't have any shortcuts for some of these except just to uh, bite the bullet and process some of these itemized uh, lists. So let's take a look with the um, Casualty Actuarial Society and an overview of enterprise risk management. What is it? Enterprise risk management is the discipline by which an organization in any industry assesses, controls, exploits, finances, and monitors risks from all sources for the purpose of increasing the organization's short-term and long-term value to stakeholders. So for the ERM framework, just graphically tried to highlight the headlines here, establish context, identify risks, analyze, quantify the risks, integrate the risks, assess and prioritize the risks, treat and exploit the risks and monitor and review. And then a schematic here on the typology of risks, tri risk types, hazards, financial, operational, and then off to the side, a couple of risks here that are not operational risks, strategic and reputational or not operational risks. Hazard risk includes risk from fire and other property damage, windstorm and other natural perils, theft and other crime, personal injury, business interruption, disease and disability, and liability claims. Financial risks include price risk, liquidity risk, credit risk, inflation, purchasing power risk, and hedging basis risk. Operational risk Strategic risk Includes risk from reputational damage, competition, customer wants, demographic and social, cultural trends, technological innovation, capital availability, and regulatory and political trends. So in terms of just, again, this paper, we have the distinction between solvency-related metrics, which concentrate on the adverse tail of the probability distribution and are relevant for determining economic capital requirements, in contrast to or is distinct from performance related metrics that concentrate on the mid region or body of the probability distribution. So an odd term there, mid region would prefer body of the distribution. Probability of ruin is the percentile of the probability distribution corresponding to the point at which capital is exhausted. Shortfall risk, the probability that a random variable falls below some speci specified threshold level. Value at risk, which is really the probably the key theme in the FRM, the maximum loss an organization can suffer under normal market conditions over a given period of time at a given probability level. We have expected policyholder deficit or economic cost of ruin. And tail value risk or tail conditional expectation, um, which we actually do look at in the Dowd reading. And it's, it's frankly so qualitative here as to not be really relevant. And performance related metrics, uh, many of which are familiar from the econometrics, including variance, standard deviation, semivariance, and downside. So we've seen uh, the semivariance downside in the Sortino ratio, right, as the Downside standard deviation was the denominator in the Sortino ratio. So we can link that to at least one uh, prior concept. And then the authors say that as a practical matter, the choice of modeling approach is typically between a statistical and analytical model and a structural simulation model. They assert a continuum of methods from objective that has the benefit of a, a, a objective data and re relying on historical data to the other side of this continuum, expert import, 